Uh, hi everyone and uh, I hope the quarantine or self-isolation or whatever enforcement is upon you in these strange times is not hitting you too badly. Uh, yeah, It's my sixth week at home now I believe. So yeah, uh, it's quite interesting. I've never experienced anything like that before. Uh, yeah, uh, so uh, we're gonna have a talk about how to plan things uh, for your racing and then we also have some time for a chat about uh, everything Deep Racer uh, and to answer all your questions uh, and yeah, that's about it. So maybe let's just get started. Uh, you see. I started, I've actually checked today and uh, in 10 days it will have been exactly one year since I trained the, my first model after reInvent 2018 and uh, this was when I decided that I had to prepare for the AWS Summit in London uh, which happened on the 8th of May. Uh, it's all fun but then also it's worth knowing that there are some rewards over there and it might make sense to think how to uh, prepare yourself uh, but yeah before we go any further uh, a bit about me so yeah i'm tomasz ptak and uh, i'm a senior software engineer at uh, at open market uh, which is a company providing messaging solutions to companies who want to communicate with their customers at a scale we're pretty global and uh, yeah sending about some billions messages every month. I'm also an AWS machine learning hero, nominated or announced in March, and uh, one of the AWS DeepRacer community leaders. Uh, I've raced in last season, I've won one of the virtual races and also was third in London. And also I took part in the finals uh, in Vegas uh, during the reInvent 2019. Apart from that, I'm a hobbyist baker. Actually, I've got some bread in my oven at the moment, so I might have an alarm clock to pick it up and take it out of the oven at some point. And I like blogging. Uh, yeah, I just like writing about things, so whenever I have a chance, I try to. So I've got quite a few uh, of those over here. Uh, right, so uh, in terms of planning uh, your race uh, there is no more than one way to do it so uh, if you've come here to just uh, find instructions like do this do that uh, you might come disappointed out of it uh, but uh, I think it should be helpful anyway because uh, I will not be providing any specific actions but at the same time I will say what is worth focusing on when you want to race and uh, and yeah we can have more chats afterwards if you've got any questions I will answer them uh, just a quick uh, reminder of what AWS DeepRacer is uh, so it's a 118th scale uh, remote control car which has an Ubuntu computer on the regular car base then uh, it pretty much steers itself based on the simple cycle where it gets the sensors input like camera image then it goes through the neural network and it comes out with a behavior decision and then the car just adjusts to it uh, you get to train the network and you've got the AWS depressor console for this and um, yeah uh, AWS have made it extremely simple to start training and racing and uh, w we've run a couple events for companies, uh, me and Lyndon, another deep racer community leader. We've seen people who have not tried anything related to deep racer before the beginning of the day and a couple of hours later they were doing under 10 second laps on the reInvent 2018 track, which was pretty impressive. Uh, so yeah, it's quite fun and you can get started uh, quite easily. But then the fastest lap I've seen uh, recorded, I think it's 7.4 seconds on that track. So getting really good requires more thought and effort. And yeah, the racing. So 
you get the virtual races during the uh, AWS Depressor League season. And uh, there are three categories this year, time trial, which has it's the same category as last year, the object avoidance, which is uh, you've got boxes on the track and you need to try to go around them and uh, and not get uh, not touch them because you get time penalty if you do. And then there's head to head racing where this one is actually the most interesting. Uh, you start racing throughout the month using um, racing against bot cars but if you make it to the top 32 at the end of the month you go into an elimination bracket and you race against actual car of another contestant and the winner obviously progresses uh, with the same rules of penalties uh, for getting off track or colliding uh, it was super exciting to watch it last month this month is another chance it was it's happening every month pretty much and physical races which are sadly not happening at the moment due to the circumstances that we've got but uh, hopefully they will get back uh, once things get better mm. so yeah let's have a quick chat about what really should be taken into account when you want to win something in the race. first of all you need to pick your goal and uh, yeah, for you've got the virtual races, you might want to excel with time trial or object avoidance or the head to head racing. But then also there are some community challenges like, um, uh, yeah, last year we've had one which was the slowest lap. Pretty interesting and pretty nice. Uh, then uh, you get, you can get some learning uh, experiences let's say you want to challenge yourself to train the car using a different algorithm and while it's not doable in the console at the moment you can try and uh, use the SageMaker notebooks that uh, AWS have supplied uh, for the training or you can have a custom a custom goal for instance I've seen videos of some guys who trained their deep racer to drive into red things uh, they call it the bullfight and pretty much every time they've put a bottle of coke in front of their car it would just cr smash into it otherwise it would just stand there and do nothing and uh, depending on the goal that you take you need to decide it, uh, how you can evaluate it and that's pretty important over here because uh, it might sound like an obvious thing but it turns out that it's not that obvious uh, if you decide to evaluate your uh, car in the wrong way you will lead to achieving wrong goal uh, for instance in terms of virtual race you want to have uh, best time in the submissions in virtual league and for a physical race the best time around the track and it might sound silly that i separate those two but then you won't be able to train a model that will do well in both of those. Uh, in uh, in virtual race, the income, the input that you get is pretty much ideal. So uh, the decisions are well better fit to the environment. And then uh, as an outcome, you can, or as a consequence of this, you can try higher speeds and uh, more specific turns, very much more precise, uh, and which this will lead to really good times. At the same time, uh, in physical racing, there is an aspect of sim to real, which is the problem of uh, transferring uh, something that you've trained in simulation where things are pretty much ideal into reality where the car wobbles because it's got the shock absorbers so it's kind of jumpy and quite often has a bit of a jerky movement around the uh, track uh, then the lighting is quite essential and we've seen shadows casting uh, cast on the track uh, ruin things especially like in the 2019 final i think what happened at some point was that the cars were smashing into the wall where there was a shadow from the track manager. Uh, 
and yes so there's there's a number of uh, things that are different in reality so you won't strain that much for speed in uh, simulation then and also you might want to include some other variations uh, like in the advanced training you can add uh, some filters to change the colors in the input and add some noise or for instance you can make the picture a bit more fuzzy and shaky uh, or you can add some randomness to actions being applied to the car that it will pretty much simulate uh, the fact that the real car has a bit of like loose movement so th th the wheels are not really adjusted exactly the same way uh, that the decision says so yeah uh, there are more things that you need to take into account then and uh, and this pretty much means that your evaluation is different you should probably find a track and see how your car does if you want to do the physical racing and then for other challenges like let's say the corrida trying to smash the coke bottle you will have different evaluation forms and you need to think about them as well and once you know what you actually want to achieve you need to think about how to go about your strategy and there's a number of things that uh, can go into account over here uh, so for instance sensors uh, last year it was pretty easy you had just a car the car had one camera in front and that's it this year you have a choice of one cam or two cameras and you can have a lidar sensor on top then there is the accelerometer which is integrated into the car and uh, well it's not activated at the moment but it's still uh, it's still there and uh, at some point it will be enabled uh, then in terms of the network layers 305 uh, this is also a new thing this year uh, if you create uh, your new model if you've been to the uh, console you get this section called garage where you provide details to your car the action space and then um, the network the, the size and what sensors you want to use and also obviously the color of the car which is very important for the speed you know uh, right now i believe trading with five layers takes insanely long i haven't really tried it or i haven't succeeded with it <coughs> so i'm sticking to the three layers and uh, just playing around with what sensors I can use to, to take make the best use of it. Then the reward function is quite an interesting uh, subject. Uh, usually people come and start uh, creating very complex reward functions using a lot of maps, doing them very generic which is quite nice and uh, it might be beneficial because if you actually find an ideal function that doesn't require many changes and is uh, quite generic you can pretty much train every month and achieve your goals the way you want it but then you will have different uh, parameters that uh, go into your reward function depending on whether you do the object avoidance or the uh, just time trial uh, still even even with time trial even though you have fewer parameters there's quite a lot of them if you take many of them into account the car receives only a number which is like let's say how many points you get for the actions that you've taken if you uh, if you calculate this number based on let's say one uh, parameter let's say turning then uh, it will be easier to uh, correlate this with the reward and to train your car to take the action about turning if you take into account 20 parameters and you put them into a complex formula working out what actually matters might uh, not be easy to do uh, my experience is that uh, with reward functions you can you can um, reward the state which is like where the car is or penalize obviously uh, where the car is on the track and this might end up with quite wobbly behavior then uh, you can reward decisions the behavior decisions and uh, this is quite difficult for me to say like uh, should what the uh, decision should be right now at this point 
but it can lead to quite quick conversion at the beginning. And then there is also something like uh, I call rewarding the potential, which you look not at the actual state or where the car is on the track. You don't look at what the actions it's taken. You look at, for instance, Mm, how short the path is to reach that point on the track and it, the shorter it is you give higher reward and you see what works and what doesn't and you can also combine them because sometimes you can decide to like say have just a weighted sum but sometimes you want to have like a multiplication of the different factors that you put into the reward function uh, there's so many ways to do it and so many ideas and truth be told even if you just do reward return one it will also learn to go around the track eventually not ideally and not very quickly but it will work as well so there's a lot of thought that should be put into the reward function um, next the action space so uh, when you use the uh, AWS Depressor console it's kind of limited. You always have a symmetric action space, same turns left, same turns right. Each turn comes with each speed. So if you have, let's say, five speeds and you have seven turns, you will have 35 actions and that's it. I think it's three speeds maximum. So yeah, you, if you have three and seven, then it will be 21 actions. Uh, with local training that I will mention in a bit, uh, you get to do a bit more with your action space especially you can set some custom shape which doesn't have exactly that amount of actions there is some hacking that you can do in the console as well between the training and cloning that will make your action space different and I've been trying things like that where I was just starting to training with uh, the amount of actions that I wanted to have and I would train just for like five or ten minutes so that the car doesn't really learn anything. And then I would just manipulate the values of actions, uh, speeds and turning, and then clone the training with the actual things that I want to learn and reward and do. And it can work. Uh, in terms of what you can set as an action, uh, we've learned that you can set like negative speed, which means that the car will go backwards. And the turning, at least last year, it wasn't very limited. So we've had a case, I think it was in July, where someone realized that setting the speed to negative and setting turn to very sharp, like not 30 degrees, which is the maximum in the console officially, but like minus, minus 60, meant that the car would start just backspinning. And as a result of backspinning, it would go behind the start line and then back ahead, which would be counted as a lap because there was a bug in the code, it got fixed since then. But also like uh, not talking about making the custom action space, but just what you can, uh, how many actions you should have. Uh, I've heard of people setting up 70 actions. They really wanted precise behavior. I don't think it made sense. Uh, on the other end, I've uh, actually it's Tony J, the guy who qualified to uh, the 2020 final already through the time trial in March. Uh, once he had a typo or made a mistake when he was preparing his action space and removed most of the actions at the beginning of the training. He didn't know why he couldn't go below certain time. Uh, I think it was in August last year. Uh, he didn't know why. And he started looking at the logs and something was just really weird over there. Then he looked into his action space and he realized that he's been doing quite a lot of nice laps with rather decent time. Not the best, but really not bad either. Using just two actions, just turn right and turn left at maximum speed. And it was just enough for him to complete laps and uh, do it pretty well. Uh, so yeah, you need to look at the action space. Then the hyperparameters. Uh, as I've mentioned, uh, AWS have done really good job at uh, isolating us from uh, the setup 
of Deepracer. It's literally just go into the console, uh, choose the default, add some uh, reward function, which is you've got examples that you can use and you can start and then your car is starting to train. That's it. Hyperparameters, I think these. this is the first thing that actually exposes you to something internal. Uh, this is the way you learn how to actually you can steer uh, the training. For quite a long time I thought that hyperparameters would not actually make your training awesome, It would they could ruin it however. And uh, the only thing you need to do is like fine-tune things and just uh, do some adjustments so that it just doesn't ruin your training. That said, I've met people who actually mainly relied on hyperparameters when training their models and the cars were insanely stable on the track and uh, they've performed really nicely. So there's a lot of learning for me in there as well. And then the training setup. So obvious choice to begin with is pick an action, uh, pick uh, things that you've got in the console, uh, choose the training type, uh, choose which tracks you want to uh, train on and how to combine the hyperparameters, action space, reward function, sensors and the layer size. But then it costs and uh, this is something that uh, has been a problem from the beginning and this was one of the driving forces for the community. Initially we started working on local setup just because it was too expensive to train uh, in the console and um, AWS since then they have done quite a lot of improvements to make it more efficient and more affordable and they are still working on it uh, we, they, they keep repeating that yeah, they are just looking for new ways and how to make it better uh, but we've learned that when we've got the local training you get access to all of the internal things that you get access to if you use the SageMaker notebook but then like if you train for 24 hours you might still get quite a nice bill uh, at the end of the month and uh, over here you can just keep trying things and randomizing them and you can automate your training as well uh, put just some more effort into preparing how you start up your training how you gather the results and how you decide which one is better uh, so yeah, I call local trading, trading on steroids because of that. And it's not about just how you decide to train, it's also about the sporting tools. So there's a number of things provided, like uh, Joachim uh, from Amsterdam has prepared a, um, a GradCam tool which is applying uh, highlighting the areas of the uh, webcam view that actually trigger a decision for a car in a given context which areas the car would look at to decide whether it should go straight left right or whatever but not only that there's also one more that i want to mention because i actually like it the most because i've made it uh, analyzing the results and monitoring progress so uh, there is a tool that we've prepared uh, in the community. Well, we started as uh, using the one that came from AWS with the workshop repository, and then started building on this to create our own. Uh, if you submit early and you submit very often, you will get more uh, samples from actual exploitation of the model instead of from the training. Trading always has some random factor to it, so you might get confused by certain decisions in the car when it, in fact, it might just turn out that it was something that got changed by the um, yeah by the algorithm. So uh, you had the decision, and then it got slightly shifted or randomized just to force something different, so that the car explores. That's how the reinforcement learning is uh, happening. Uh, if you get the evaluation logs, you can put them into a tool for log analysis, the, for, the link for which I will provide later in the chat as well. And then you can just analyze it and try to understand what's going on in, with your car. I like to say uh, that this is pretty much just an art of asking the right questions and then answering them. 
because quite often you might look for an answer to the question that actually won't get you better and won't progress you on the next level when racing. Uh, the couple of screens that I'm showing over here are the pictures from the training tool. I especially like the one to the left and uh, this is because the way the scatter points align over here this is a, a how much of a reward the car is receiving depending on how much time it's taking it to go around the track or pretty much wherever it gets off track at that point uh, the car was reset if it went out of track it would not get penalized and this is something that's happening in the training still so in this one you can see that the uh, reward is growing and the slower you go the higher the reward is so probably not the best one but then it's not really sure for this one is actually pretty bad because uh, from what i remember the actual training that this screen came from uh, it had a reward function return one uh, but sometimes you might get a higher reward but depending on how you set your hyperparameters it might not matter because the samples that you look at might be small enough to still reward the right behavior around the track and even though you get high reward uh, for the slow laps you get pretty good reward in the evaluation and then there's another one that I one of the first ones that I added the one in the corner which is showing the completion rate this is one that I look at quite often to decide whether I should be changing something into in my training and maybe making it a bit more extreme uh, it's showing uh, how many laps get completed uh, in the iteration uh, and uh, yeah the more there are the higher it is the values are from zero which is no laps completed and to one which is every lap every episode in the iteration ha resulted in a complete lap uh, if i get many laps it might be good but it might be not so good at the same time because the more stable your model gets, the more closer to the average it becomes. If you look at a, uh, how the times uh, for the complete laps layout, most of them are, it's pretty much, it looks like a normal distribution. So most of them are somewhere around a mean value in the middle, and then you've got the tails. If your car becomes more consistent, the tails will disappear which means you won't get the bad laps but you're after the good ones which might also disappear because of that this might also mean that either you need to boost something in your action space or maybe you're just training for a suboptimal behavior so yeah just ask some questions and start answering them the next thing to look at is the rules so yeah, you need to follow the rules. There's uh, terms on condi and conditions that uh, that come with the race. And if you look at it, there are pretty much a couple rules. One is you need to use your own model. Another one is that you need to complete a race, which last year was not that easy and obvious, especially since in the evaluation we had different tracks than in the training. But this year is slightly different because you get the penalties if you touch an object that you need to avoid you get five seconds penalty for each case like that and if you get off track you get two seconds penalty you need to complete three laps and it's not just start stop for each lap it's three laps continuously but every time you get a penalty you get stopped and you need to start over which means that you go a bit slower uh, but yeah, you will continue to complete a lap or if you manage to do it like I did today, I actually had the first time that I managed to not complete a lap because I was just hitting some box in object avoidance all the time and, uh, and just probably everything timed out at some point. Well, tough luck. Uh, I, I know there are some limits because the uh, evaluations just, just cannot run indefinitely. So yeah, these are the main rules, which means that every time we had a case where it's, we saw some people doing weird things we thought like hey that's not fair like we've realized that people were just uh training by boosting the uh, they were boosting their action space we thought it was not fair but 
the rules don't say you cannot boost your action space as you train. We were thinking about people who were uh, using some really strange trainings or they were using their own training setup. Was it fair? Was it not fair? Well, there is a local training uh, setup that you can use. It's that and it's not forbidden. You can use it. And at the same time, like I've mentioned, the July races where people were just doing the backspin. This, these weren't complete laps, so they were removed from uh, they were removed from the uh, rankings. And same went for people who, as it turned out, were not using their own models. They just got cleaned, f removed from the uh, from the end results. So yeah, just remember that there are some rules, and uh, you can act upon. You need to act upon them, but they allow quite a lot. And yeah, uh, get some sleep because Deep Racer can be involving and it can be exciting and really addictive. Just don't make it ruin your day. Don't uh, don't go just exhausted the next day and stay up very late trying to force something to happen. Uh, quite often you just it's worth letting go and uh, just just having a sleep and thinking about things. Well, if it's not this month, you'll try another month. Well, tough luck. But if you get rest and you get more time not staring in your car, going around the track, you might just find the answer. It might just hit you that it was pretty obvious. And I had a lot of uh, such aha moments, pretty much the moment I said like, yep, just I'm done. And the next one, yeah, keep learning. Uh, I like to say that uh, Deep Racer uh, comes with a lot of collateral learning, things that you haven't thought you had to get and learn in the past uh, uh, for this to happen. So obviously, yeah, reinforcement learning, machine learning. Uh, this is something that you will get, at least some of it. And uh, if you follow up on this, you'll have quite a boost for learning. But then uh, you learn how to use S3, how to use CloudWatch. Uh, you learn a lot of things that you haven't thought that you would have to. And uh, for me, as I said, I'm a Java dev and I work in legacy. Uh, Depressor is pretty much the first AWS service that I've been using. and. Uh, and it's pretty much still the main one. I'm learning more about AWS and I can give some suggestions already on what things could be used or explored for different solutions. And I'm building more and more on this. But then also there are other things like Python. Uh, well, you need to write the reward function, which doesn't need to be very complex and uh, you can just do it pretty easily. But if you do the data analysis, I've learned Pandas. I've learned how to use the Jupyter Notebook. Uh, a lot of things that I haven't thought about. Uh, this year I've actually learned how to build a Python package and put it out on PyPy. So there is a package that I'm maintaining on PyPy just because I wanted to do the data analysis better for DeepRacer. Linux. We've had people who actually joined the community saying, hey, so I've just installed my Ubuntu. What do I do now to do the training? And uh, it turned out that they were just Windows users and they had never in the past used anything else. And we've had people from community who just helped them out and they actually set things up and they got the going. It was pretty impressive. And some maps as well. So I think I just uh, overemphasize what the maps gives me. But at the same time, I had quite a brain refresher when I did some maths courses to understand things better and right now uh, looking at the white papers because yeah you'll get to read a lot of white papers they don't scare me anymore and I understand more from them especially I know which letters are which because it's sometimes not only Greek alphabet there's more uh, it's pretty impressive what you get over there and uh, what you can learn uh, and yeah, there is even more. So one thing that I haven't expected to happen when I started all of this, I haven't expected that the community would grow like this and I have not expected that I would be in the center of it. 
So yeah, I've learned quite a lot of uh, community stuff, how to run a community, how to run a website, how to reach out to people saying like, hey, let's do this meetup, let's talk about things over here, let's prepare something, let's connect people together to get something done and have fun together and learn at the same time. So yeah, learning will come. Uh, either you need to force yourself a little bit or it will just hit you at some point. And yeah, there is the next thing, try your luck. You're always after the best times and I've mentioned a distribution of times of complete laps and this graph over here is showing this for you. Uh, you've got some average ones, but you're really after the best times, the under nine seconds over here. And uh, sometimes it's just a matter of keeping submitting until you hit this one. And I've had races where I thought I did pretty decent when I've learned that I actually was really average and I had just one lucky shot that went really well. And uh, yeah, uh, sometimes uh, it's just a matter of luck, but do try aiming for the consistency. And uh, yeah, the most important thing from my perspective is ask the community. Uh, every good question which challenges community members to get better answers, especially if it's confusing at first. Every, every question like that is a great contribution and it might take time to just find the right answer, but uh, well, this is how it works. Sometimes it's not really easy uh, to find it straight away. Uh, but we'll help you look into the logs, find out why things are not working and why we get errors. Uh, yeah. That's what we're there for. That's pretty much what the community was built on. And uh, the 2000 members that went through the community throughout the year, they did not come out of nowhere. And uh, we made sure that they did not leave the community without the help that they needed. Um, yeah, uh, so the links that I'm showing over here, I'm gonna post them in a the chat in a bit. Uh, the first one is just uh, how to join the community. Uh, the second one is our blog where we try to um, give as many announcements about things happening around the world. And the third one is our knowledge base, which always welcomes contributions from community members. And uh, it's our attempt so uh, on preparing a place where the answers are so that it's easier for you to uh, to, to get them and find them without looking through Slack and trying to find them over there. So yeah, now it's the time for us to get some questions answered. Uh, let me see what we've got over here. Right. Uh, how I know the average time to train my model and is there a minimum time? So. Uh, there isn't a fixed minimum time to train your model. Uh, you might be able to complete a lap pretty quickly, especially with the wider tracks that are available this year. Uh, but at the same time, uh, it's more of a feel that you need to get and uh, the way you want to work into it. What I normally do is I keep training at uh, pretty parameters that are pretty close to default until I start getting regular laps and the moment this happens I start training with uh, or at least quite high average completion rate on each episode and then I just uh, start lower lowering the learning rate so that uh, I don't get the uh, like a wobbliness on the graph which you can see normally that uh, it starts just at the the completion rate average one per episode starts zigzagging in on the graph and this probably means that you're already having quite a high learning rate so you keep jumping around the optimum solution and this might mean that yeah if you lower the learning rate you'll get closer to it which means that you might just suddenly start getting much more uh, complete laps um, yeah, the next question, uh, yeah, so in terms of the minimum time, I think the minimum time that I had someone run a complete lap was 15 minutes of training, uh, but 
a decent time that we've seen is usually around an hour and a half two hours of training to start lapping in a physical race and usually just already involves uh, laps in the uh, virtual race as well are the models the, the next question is uh, are the models trained with 305 player neural network topology differ uh, on how good they will be that's a tricky question that because I don't have an answer to that and uh, the reason for that is that the five layer models were introduced in December and uh, the way it's, uh, we train the cars has changed quite significantly and we haven't had a chance to try it on the cars because uh, the firmware on the physical cars does not allow you to race with five layers yet and uh, we believe that this would be um, this should be introduced the moment evos come out but at the same uh, at the moment uh, the situation is quite difficult in terms of uh, manufacturing evos so we are not really sure when they will be released uh, but yeah when they do we'll get also the firmware which will allow to actually see whether we can get more done what I've learned so far, uh, and the advice that I received was it's better to try training with a smaller network at first because if you use a network that's too big uh, you might think that you actually trained well but it might be that just your network kind of learned by heart what to do which uh, in terms of deep racer you, you're after the best uh, results so it might work but when you get more data it might turn out that your car just doesn't know what to do when it's being put on a different track or there's the lighting that's different there's uh, the 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 simpler the network is the better the chance is that the behavior will be generalized but at the same time i'm not sure if i could train the car to go around the track using three layers with a lidar and uh, two cameras i just never tried really uh, which deep racer track should i start training usually the guides will tell you to start with uh, 2018 uh, what we've learned for physical racing on the 2018 uh, wide track is that uh, if you start training really short time on the oval track the car already learns things and I was quite surprised to see that even though oval track does not have any right turns the car might learn how to do the right turns because it just might if you see let's say this is the uh, side of the track if it approaches the line it might learn that it needs to kind of rebound and go to the other side so we've seen the car complete a rain reinvent 2018 track uh, after just training on the oval uh, but yeah this is uh, because most guides are around 2018 track this is uh, this is why i would recommend learning with it but then you can also try just on the track that has a race against it at the moment so right now i don't remember the name of this month's track uh, but uh, yeah it's pretty nice and uh, quite challenging at the same time so you can see that the moment your car starts improving it goes really well uh, yeah you can try this one or you can just go with a simpler one for now uh, regardless of that if you need any help just come to the community uh, there are log analysis channels and some general ones you can say like hey I'm trying to progress I don't see this uh, could you help me out and um, if we find time if I find time I might even try and help you out with the log analysis for what you are having in your training and then well when you gain more feel and experience uh, that's when the fun starts really uh, yeah, the next question is uh, what aspect should I focus on so that the mobile increases uh, the probability that it completes the track with greater speed? Um, yeah, this is uh, that's quite an old question, you know. So, even at the very beginning in May, people say, I want to go fast, what should I do? And uh, there isn't one answer. Uh, 
I've learned that the best way to make the car go fast is not to let it go slow. Uh, and it might sound silly or trivial, but it really is that. What we've learned is the car will aim for stability. And if you set your higher speeds too high, um, even uh, if you reward going fast, it might lead to doing bad behaviors and lack of stability. If you go for stability, your car will just learn to go slow. Uh, what I normally do is uh, I don't set many speeds on a given direction, but I try to work out which speeds work for each turn. And then my action space is uh, quite often not symmetrical even. So I don't have the same amount of turns left or right. And, uh, and then I try to kind of hack around with the action space to see how much I can get out of given behavior. And uh, I usually reach a state when higher speeds just don't work for a given behavior. And it might be that the car will just train how to behave properly and change, alter its behavior. And I've seen this, that the car would alter its behavior and start doing what I wanted it to do. Uh, but sometimes it might mean that you just need to go back, maybe even start over, think about a different action space. Uh, Kira Ganev from uh, Macedonia, uh, he had a talk at reInvent 2019 uh, about action space analysis. And he has a notebook that he released. Uh, it's available on GitHub to pretty much analyze that and see what works, what doesn't work. And so yeah, I do recommend that you go on the community YouTube channel and find Kira's uh, talk, which might help you with that. If you haven't been racing yet, uh, then I recommend uh, watching some videos that are shared on the Deep Racer page from Amazon. There are some videos, well, they are about the old setup uh, before the updates that came around uh, the uh, reinvent uh, or were announced around that time uh, but they are still a nice resource and there are also quite, uh, some links over there that will help you understand things uh, then if you want to do the deep racer analysis then the re repository from the community uh, I'm gonna post it on the in the chat as well uh, Next thing is, um, so we've got the link to uh, Slack. I'm going to post a link to a blog and the wiki as well, just so that it's easier for you to go over there. And yeah, if you just, uh, if you join Slack, just reach out to me and say hi. Uh, I'll be happy to answer any questions you have in private. Uh, I'm on Slack as Tomasz Ptak, my first and last name, so I should be easy to find over there. And usually I'm pretty much all over the place over there. Uh, it, this is something that probably motivated me most to race the community. And uh, yeah, for the local training, check the Slack channel. Yes, and also I think I have the repository link in here. Let me check. Um, yeah, the community is quite uh, quite a force. Uh, it's, it's really impressive. Um, and the fact that uh, the help you get from everyone, the recognition you get from even answering the simplest uh, the simplest question, it's really out of this world. Um, I believe this is the link. And uh, let me just check if it works. Yep, that's the link to the, uh, this is the 2020 uh, training setup. Uh, just bear in mind that uh, it works best on Ubuntu uh, and also, uh, well, there's some more information about it on the wiki, but in general, uh, things don't work ideally and sometimes there are problems because we're all learning as we're doing this 
and uh, we're getting support from people who join. If you know how to like build things around Troublemaker and SageMaker, then every help will be appreciated. Uh, if you just have any problems, then we've got the local training setup channel, which will also, uh, if you have any problems, just let us know over there and we'll help you set things up and find out how to do it best. Uh, the interesting thing about the local training is that you can actually train it in the cloud. So we've got the local training, but in reality, just uh, cloud-based training uh, that you can deploy and uh, use spot instances for it, which comes much cheaper than going through the um, through the console. But uh, yeah, this is. Uh, one of the aspects I think the best power of it is that you just actually get to learn the internals and uh, you get to try things out that are not easily available in the console but at the same time even I do the console training every now and then because why not it's quite easy and it's quite fun and if you're not at home and don't have access to your instances uh, easily, sometimes it's easier to just look at your AWS DeepRacer console and have fun with it. Uh, yeah, so I think we'll be uh, wrapping up now. Uh, so yeah, if you would like to connect with me, you can find me on LinkedIn over here. And then uh, I usually blog about my own things on the uh, on the uh, code like a mother dot uk, and if you like baking bread, then bread centric is your place. Uh, since I think we've got all the questions answered, and I cannot see any new flowing. If you have any questions, just reach out to me in the community, and uh, I think we can. Uh, wrap things up now so thank you for coming and uh, yeah it's been a pleasure talking to you and uh, if you've got any questions just reach out to me uh, thank you very much